Sermon title, Happy Mother's Day 2023. Subtopic, An Underdog Focus by Pastor Kevin Quailchild Rodriguez. Praise God, praise God. We're going to go ahead and get started. If God has been good to you, come on, let's give God a great hand clap. Put our feet on solid ground. Hello, somebody. Amen. We are going to go ahead and get started. Happy Mother's Day, certainly, to all the women, all the mamas, all the G-moms, all the G-squared moms. Amen. All the future moms. Come on. Our women, our girls, you're precious, you're precious, you're precious. And today we get to spend this time and to really reflect Amen, because something I'm guilty of, y'all. I sometimes take for granted my beautiful wife and what she does and her contribution to the family. But, you know, on a day like this, it helps us to just stay reminded of what our women do, their contribution in our lives. Amen. But right now, we're going to go ahead and get into worship. So as Sister Jeanette comes up right now, come on, let's get it.
he came up to me one time and he had a little cut on his knee. And he's like, Mom, you know, I hurt myself and I went to clean it up. And he says, Mom, you're like a doctor and a chef. And he just named off all these things. And I was like, yeah, he's like, you're the best mom. And it was like so special. That's something that always stuck with me. Um, but I'm sure you guys have a lot of stories too. But I just wanted to share that so I can embarrass him this today. <laughs> You don't have to. Come on, you Come on, Junior, yeah. Whatever you want. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So, my mom's over there. And I was like, so, like, almost the whole church, the weird knows. And my mom's name is Glory. She, whenever she, like, whenever I, like, I'd say I'm sad or uh, someone really hurt me. And I think that because she is, she is like, The most inspirational person to me, and I think that my mom, if she was never my mom and I had a different mom, I would be a whole different person. And I just thank you for taking me to church every Sunday, and even though um, when she was not doing so well in her sobriety, her sobriety and I think that my mom is the most wonderful wonderful person you could ask in her life.
um, they helped me through my recovery, and they loved me through my bad, through my good, through my ugly. And I just want to thank you and bless you, ladies. Thank you, Pastor Gloria. Thank you.
mama too. She really is. And, uh, and I thank you guys for being here. Um, Don, my friend, my beautiful friend Don. Oh my goodness, this woman. She has a big family. She's a mama of six children. Six, right? Yes. And so, <laughs> um, and she is has been doing it, you know, as a single mother all these years. And she is just so involved with wanting her children to be involved in the community and activities and, and uh, groups. And, and, you know, it's usually me and her that are showing up for certain things yeah. or volunteering. And, you know, and she's still volunteering. And I'm still trying to hold my hand. Day, you 
you know, feeling and presence. It is wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. But last week, there were some things that were released and blessed us. Um, things that I, you know, it's, it's different when, you know, you hear it from me all the time, right? Uh, what's taking place in the prophetic, the things that are going to come. And, but when you have it come from a different angle, saying the same thing, wow. Uh, Trumpet of Praise Fellowship really blessed us last week. And I'm grateful to God that we were able to be here to sit into both services. Amen. But uh, even the dream, the interconnection that God has, has shown, how it connects to even other disciples that had similar dreams. And what God is going to do in, in, this, in this land. Amen. I don't take it for granted. Uh, the, the birthing of some of the ministries that are in the womb right now, God is going to begin to uh, bring the passion to the future of that vision, um, bringing restoration and recovery closer to the to the um, reservations, amen, bringing that convenience, it's on its way, it's on its way in the name of Jesus, but thank God that uh, we were able to see the confirmation last week, it really blessed my heart, uh, Apostle Gary Sims, when you get a chance to see this, you will know that uh, we thank you, sir, and, and Bishop Fuller as well, we thank you all. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, certainly, y'all, uh, we welcome each other in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, we're going to go ahead and, and get right into things. Uh, let's pray for the word um, here today to open up our heart. If I could have you stand, please, for the reading, for the prayer here today. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Dear Heavenly Father, we, we thank you. Lord, real quick, we just want to lift up our sister, our dear sister who contributes and coordinates uh, certainly the food ministry and also, Lord, the, what you have in store for her in the future, Bertina, our, our dear sister. We pray that, Lord, you would touch her body, you would just touch her right there in her home and, and, and help her in any way that she needs to, to see to it that her body heal quickly. Father, we thank you for your healing power upon our sister Bertina and anybody else that has a, a healing need here today, Lord, we thank you that we can petition the kingdom. Your, your, your son is very clear that we seek first ye the kingdom of God and all its righteousness and these things will be added unto us. So here today, Lord, we just lift up these petitions and now, Lord, we ask that you open up our heart to receive your word here on Mother's Day, Father. What a, what a word that you've planted in my heart and I, I can take no credit for for how you do what it is that you do. And yes, this is the first year that even I have to uh, stand behind the pulpit that my mom won't see this in the physical. But Father, I know that in heaven she's, she's seeing this sermon uh, take place even today. So Lord, we, I, I thank you for my mom. I thank you for my, all my grandmothers, Lord. Uh, I thank you for all the mothers represented here, all the mothers that are represented in the future as well. We're getting close to you here today. So, Lord, encourage us with the word that you uh, put on my heart to deliver to your children, Father, my brothers and sisters here today in sanctuary. Holy Spirit, I ask you to take full control, nothing that manifests here today. Do we glory in the flesh, the Father, we deflect all the praise, all the honor, all our living sacrifices as a, as a service pleasing to you in the kingdom of heaven, to you in spirit. Here today, Lord, we ask Holy Spirit to take full control in the mighty name of Jesus. And we all say, Amen and Amen. amen. try to cut off our live stream, you know, and that it was, wasn't even paying attention. And so as soon as I called up uh, Apostle Sims, it cut off. But uh, we were still blessed, and it's, it, it's, it's recorded in our mind and our hearts, amen. But if I look down, I'm trying to change things up a little bit just to add to the quality of services, but, um, whew, wow, what a blessed, what a blessed entry of the the, the presence of the Holy Spirit as, as he, he ushered right into sanctuary here today, amen. We may think, uh, Don Beauty, that we just walk into a recreational center, but God will light the fire of heaven and make this a sanctuary. And when we feel the presence of the Holy Spirit, no matter where you go, in your own house, in the riverbeds, I mean, on the park benches, he will set up shop wherever we, as living sacrifice, welcome him. And when we gather in his name, he is here to be faithful, to bless us all. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. 
Turn with me to the book of Genesis. Book of Genesis chapter 21. When you get there, say amen. I know Glory's going to beat me to it. Book of Genesis chapter 21. Amen. And we're going to read. <laughs> we're going to read from verses 8 through 21. Genesis chapter 21 verses 8 through 21. And the word of the Lord reads, The child grew and was weaned, and on the day Isaac was weaned, Abraham held a great feast. But Sarah saw that the son whom Hagar the Egyptian had borne to Abraham was mocking. And she said to Abraham, Get rid of that slave woman and her son, for that woman's son will never share in the inheritance with my son Isaac. The matter distressed Abraham greatly because it concerned his son. But God said to him, do not be so distressed about the boy and your slave woman. Listen to whatever Sarah tells you because it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. I will make the son of the slave into a nation also. I will make the son of the slave into a nation also. One more time. I will make the son of the slave into a nation also because he is your offspring. Early the next morning, Abraham took some food and a skin of water and gave them to Hagar. He set them on her shoulders and then sent her off with the boy. She went on her way and wandered in the desert of Beersheba. When the water and the skin was gone, she put the boy under one of the bushes. Then she went off and sat down about a bow shot away from, for she thought, I cannot watch the boy die. And as she sat there, she began to sob. God heard the boy crying, and the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, What is the matter, Hagar? Do not be afraid. God has heard the boy crying as he lies there. Lift the boy up and take him by the hand, for I will make him into a great nation. For I will make him into a great nation. One more time. For I will make him into a great nation. Then God opened her eyes and she saw a well of water. Ooh. So she went and filled the skin with water, gave the boy a drink. God was with the boy as he grew up. God was with the boy as he grew up. God was with the boy as he grew up. He, he lived in the desert and became an archer. While he was living in the desert of Paran, his mother got a wife for him. A wife, a wife, a wife for him from Egypt. The grass withers, the flowers fade, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Sherman title today, quite simply, is Happy Mother's Day, but subtopic, listen church, subtopic and underdog focus. Look to your neighbor and say underdog focus. See, single women is no new thing. Um, here we just read that even though the covenant came through Abraham and through the faith, through the seed, right? And he lacked faith because God said, I I'm going to give you a son and, and, and he's going he's gonna to bless the people's, like the sand upon the seashore, right? That, that, that through your seed, through his seed, it will bless the nations. That there will be many that will be blessed from his seed. Um, but as the story goes, as the Bible teaches us, right, 
they're old in their age, they get impatient. Who's guilty of that? <laughs> let, me, let me put up all my limbs. I've been guilty of being impatient, right? Run before God. He's saying, you no, know, slow down, get things right here, you know, but I get impatient and I, I try to run ahead sometimes with God and, I, and I'm guilty of it, right? They ran ahead, you know. Uh, Sarah says, you know, um, I don't think this is going to happen. I, I don't think that uh, what God said, I, I'm, I'm lacking faith here. I don't believe that, uh, you know, I will ever bear a child. My womb is barren, right? And she even chuckled when the angel of heaven came to talk to uh, Abraham about this. That, uh, man, that just so sounds so ridiculous. I'm, you know, I'm whatever age, 80, 90 years old, whatever it was. She was very up there in age. She was up there at an age that you didn't bear children uh, anymore. But God can change the order of things. God, in his plan and his purpose and what he says, right, he makes it come to pass. No ifs, no ands, no buts. It comes to pass. But but Sarah lacked faith and she said, you know, um, that, that beautiful young Egyptian lady over there, uh, I want you to marry her along with me, but marry her, go into her, have my ch child through her, right? The Egyptian woman, who's now, you know, we read in the story, she's a single mom now, and she was just pushed away, right? She, she was essentially, like, pushed away. Like, she got to go. She's got to go. But uh, what happened, what Abraham did, make no mistake, what Sarah did was ungodly. Listen, it was ungodly because they lost faith with God. They broke faith with God. And, and because they broke faith with God, they ran ahead and they did things their way. Right? They did things their way. And as a result, now he has two wives. It was always intended we have one wife, not a bunch of wives, right? But but this goes to show that when, when this Egyptian woman had no uh, say in the matter, she was a slave, that means she was bound by the direction of this household, Abraham and Sarah the wife, right? She had to obey. There was no, uh, there was, there was no room for disobedience. They lorded, they had to lord, that's why she was, a, they lorded their authority over her and they told her, you got to sleep with me, have this child. And of course, Abraham, as old as he was and as young and beautiful, this young, dark-skinned Egyptian was, he, he didn't complain about that, right? He went right in. He went right in. Breaking faith with God, then the child comes. And see, no matter how a child comes, it's a child of God. No matter how a child comes, the Father in heaven, that soul belongs to God. And he loves that child. It doesn't matter what sinful things led up to the production of a child. That, that child belongs to God. Amen? But we see here now, the unfortunate directive, you know, kids will be kids. <laughs> uh, Ishmael wasn't even that old, so when he was mocking Isaac and what Isaac was doing, kids will be kids. Kids do stupid things. I know I was a, a child. I once, like Apostle Paul said, I once thought like a child. I, 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 was, I was in every matter like a child. I was immature, but, but when I grew up, Right? I had to put away my childish behavior and, and I had to become now a man. I had to become now a mature adult. And I no longer think like a child anymore. So, so just because Isaac mocked, right, it didn't make for an excuse. You, Sarah, quite simply and in a very uh, uh, ungodly way, you said, uh, Abraham, you do this thing because I want my child. And now you're saying, that child ain't yours. Although you were the one, you were the seed. You planted that seed to produce that. You planted it in the mind of Abraham, and of course he went for it. He didn't, he didn't have any complaints with that. 
He went in. He did it. He, he went right in. Right? Now this child comes and the unfortunate things. Now, you, you got to go now. And that slave woman's child, oh, it's no longer Sarah's anymore? Right? How wicked. How, how ungodly. <laughs> you know, so, so we can understand why Sarah would, would go into the wilderness now, into the desert, sobbing and weeping before the presence of the Lord. Bless you, baby. I got relief from that one. That was a good one. <laughs> but sobbing. Not like me right now, you know, hearing all this testimony on white, you know. No, sobbing, snot coming out the nose, uh, maybe even some drool, uncontrollable uh, 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 water and, and, and mucus coming out of the orifices of, of, the, the, of the head, right? Just sobbing before the Lord. You know, I understand that. I mean, yeah, Abraham, you did it. You know, it grieved you because you knew what was going on it was wrong. And it wasn't that God said he did no wrong. He, he, he just simply said that, that uh, they'll be reckoned. So, so don't be too concerned about this. Not, not that he didn't do anything wrong, because certainly he did something way wrong. I think we can learn from this story that even though all the details that came to the forefront here, that God said and he, he, he promised, even though they ran ahead with me, made a product out of breaking faith with me. And Ishmael now, right? And he's known for, for his works even in Iraq. A lot of people think that the root of uh, uh, the, the, the religion Islam was, was connected, right? But let me tell you something. Not, we, we think of Egypt as our flesh, our selfish flesh, like spiritually. We, we refer to Egypt because the Israelites always trying to go back to their old uh, idolatry, worshiping false gods, and not the one only living God who was invisible, but many different gods, and, and idling, you know, Things that were, were, were created by man, right? So we refer to Egypt as spiritually as us going really back to our vomit a lot of times. Or, or the place of, of where our sin loves to dwell and rest in. So that's a lot of times we say that. But here clearly God loved this Egyptian woman and her son. And the same blessing that I have planned for Isaac in a different region and even though he's going to be like a, a donkey he's going to be a wild ass the word of God said right? Arturo, your personality is different than mine but we both love God Vida, your personality is different than Gloria's but you both love God and by the way, Mama, there's been some growth in our families, right? You, you see a different person standing up here behind the pulpit today than you, what that knucklehead you saw 12 years ago. Yes. Only God. Only God. And same. And, and same. And you and us Absolutely. And see, that was the testimony, glory, by your mom. If we all were paying attention, the Holy Spirit shifted things because through her encouraging words, God changed the atmosphere and arrested our attention. Our elder mama, Edith, with such few words, arrested. The Holy Spirit used her as a conduit to arrest our attention through her voice. And like my mom just said, that's the beauty and the working power of God that, that brings a newness and a change in us. So no matter how Ishmael uh, came about God's favor, it said he will also do the same thing as Isaac. An underdog focus. We don't know in the story, and yeah, there's more details in the book of Jasher, right? But one thing I do know is even though disorder hit this family and ungodliness caused this woman to be subject to the wilderness again. 
as underdog as that is, God favored her and the son and was with them. We take for granted a lot of times the underdog and how crazy Tisha we're talking about. Underdog on a Mother's Day. Last year it was nice, right? It was, we were talking about the mom of Jesus and her beautiful exampleship as a mother to community, to, to us as ministers, to, to reverence and to appreciate, to remember, be reminded what their contribution to our family is. When, when mama ain't in the home, you got to pull, you, you got to fill in the gap. And that, I'll tell you what, with all the other things you got going on, man, when you got to be mama up in there, up in there, like doing the dishes, doing the laundry, it's a physical way to realize how much we men are to take for granted what the contribution, and that's what we talked about last year, right? Through Mary and through her ministry and, and what she meant the faith that she had to bear a perfect child, never been done before, but God had to use virgin blood, pure, untainted from sin, to birth Jesus out of the canal of her womb. That's what we talked about last year, Tish, but, but today we're talking about the underdog because, see, God did not say no to the underdog, but said, you know what? The great I am that I am, I'm going to bless the underdogs too. The underdogs plead on earth and God hears from heaven and God blesses even the underdogs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I know some underdogs in here today and, and yes, I give reverence to God. I thank God for the, for the glories, for the genetics that are really pillars even for the community, right? That, that have the orderly structure and are investing in their family. I praise God for that, but today it wasn't about that, although that is, God is deserving of that praise. He spoke to me the underdog. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the seasons that we're in, and you're going to hear me say it over and over and over again, like Bertina shared recently, I shared with you, Lord, I hope this is okay, but I just, the Holy Spirit brought that to mind, to remember it. She said, oh, brother, I feel something It's different. And, 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 and now, I'm, I, I feel the different when I'm around just ordinary people. Not that I don't have compassion for everybody. <laughs> Unless, Lydia, we can be like Apostle Paul and smooth and respect that gangster, respect that, that, that black man who looks different than us, that white man or a white woman that looks different than, uh, than us. If, if we don't turn a cheek to wrongdoing, how can we ever have access to share the good news of God? Right? I don't need to be going after people's juggles, but she said quite simply, I feel different these days. And it's because she's got a gift brewing it in, in, in her womb. This prophetic gift that is that is developing and the passion for this gift that's to be a blessing for the community. And I said, sister, that's because prophets, even like Apostle Sims last week said, us prophets were strange to ordinary people. And we're strange is because we've learned the value, Lydia, to crucify our flesh more than anybody else in the fivefold of the ministry. The prophet. The apostle. And so she's given that devotion to God, and, and that's what's brewing in her womb to bring forth a ministry that will bless the community. This season that I want to just quickly share on was a season that in the end of 2020, God was speaking into 2021. And the season that was, and these seasons were to connect. And to continue. So as, as exposure started to happen, it was going to continue to happen. Exposure, wrongdoing, bad things. And I'm not talking about just in everyday life. I'm talking about at high level leadership of, throughout our society, throughout our government, throughout our church organizations, throughout everything. At the 
highlighted, the CEOs, you know, the, the, the judges that have authority over a lot, right? Bad things were going to be exposed, but after that it was going to connect to the, to the season of 2021 to bring reconciliation. God's judgment was to correct some things and see, remember this, God loves those he corrects, he chastises, he, 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 he rebukes. Like my wife said so eloquently, like I thought it was very beautiful from the voice of a mama, right? Like, like if we as parents didn't rebuke our children because we don't love you the way God, spare not the rod, the word of God says. And that really just means not, not to beat your, you know, children to bloodiness or nothing like that. That's wrong, right? But don't withhold discipline, right, Suzette? You see the value of actually ensuing that discipline, allowing the discipline to help guide our children. Why do I want my child to stumble and fall? Why would I want that? Rather than to direct him and correct him and to, to, to help teach him so that he does not stumble. You know? But this is the season that we're in right now as the three collided. Is I want to focus real quick on this underdog issue on the matter of reconciliation. God is bringing reconciliation to the land. 30 years ago, Donald Trump got away with violating a woman and thought that just because he had so much money that he would get away with it. But can I tell you, church, and I, I can hear a pin drop right now, Pippa, to drop. See, see, Carol, had her mouth shunned because she grew up at a time where men lorded their authority over women, not respecting the woman. How much confusion that brings, that's another, that's another uh, 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 talking point. But here, Carol, like, I gotta keep my mouth shut because I'm overwhelmed with, with this power, this money that, that, that causes, you know, people to make my world a living hell because of this situation. But the word of God says, Suzette, the word of God reminds us that everything done in the dark eventually be... Oh, I didn't say it. You heard it for yourself. I can't make this stuff up. But God, this week, to a man who thought he was all that, a bag of chips, lie after lie after lie, God brought reconciliation. Our children go through painful things. 
you know, but my dad was the neighborhood dad, and this was painful to see how it affected the family, the dad and how, and then all my friends, for the most part, were being raised by their moms or the grandmothers. The, the mom is dead, she overdosed, and dad is in prison. I mean, so, so many different scenarios that, that create this underdog situation, but God still hears from heaven for all of us, for the underdog. Even the Word of God reminds us that it is good ministry that when you pay attention to the widow, you help them. You help them. Food, clothing, finances, whatever the church can do. That's what the early church did, y'all. It was all about community. As our neighbor Navajo people say, yeah, that one word means community in the activities to, to, to help one another. Yeah. Right? You underdogs are not forgotten. God is listening from heaven. And even though like this situation, it goes, it goes, it goes dormant for 30 years, and thanks be unto God. And you know, this isn't just the only thing people are getting reconciliation for. Many black men are, 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 are escaping jail sentences that were put on their lives who said for a lifetime. And, and, and science, the very thing that was created through sin, God has turned it around and, and started using it for good. And even science is vindicating people in their jails. Thank you, God. Your word says that you, you eventually work all things out for our good, for those who are called and destined by your will, Lord, like, like we see it happening. The underdog in this time, in this hour, God is moving on their behalves. So don't walk out of here today, church, uh, underestimating the value of the underdog's situations. Amen? And I know, I know there's men holding it down for the same. I, it, it breaks my heart when I see, like, uh, just recently a, a wife uh, died in, in, in a close-by relative, right? The wife died, and the dad who loved her dearly, like they had the order, you know, no, not perfect, but they had the order of God on their side because young wife, young husband, two beautiful children. The right way, God was doing a good thing and decided to take daughter off from driver hit her. So sometimes this underdog is also to the men, but more often than not, more often than not, we're laying the seed wherever we go because we're some knucklehead, perverted, perverse uh, males, right? And I know we all battle perversion in our minds. All of us do. I'd stand a convicted liar if I, even as a minister, told you that I don't battle that. Even though Apostle Paul was a super apostle. He was delivered, yet he had a thorn in his flesh. Don't ever forget the value of that thorn, right? But listen. The underdog Make no mistake, God, like Hagar, is listening from heaven and saying, I know your situation is unfortunate, but I'm going to bring something fortunate to you. I'm going to bring a blessing to you. I, I got your back when nobody else get, has your back, and everybody in here will all fail each other. Yeah, the Word of God says, even for the ministers, be above reproach. You know what that means, Arturo? That means that I have the ability by God's grace, that when I take captive to a wrong thought, I can subject that thought and put it under the blood before I manifest it in the physical. Even though I commit it in my heart, I'm guilty of that, I have to repent for that, but you never see it. You don't see it. Because I've learned the value to put it under the blood. I thought a thing, I knew it was wrong, I fantasized about it a little too long, but I put it under the blood. And you don't see it manifest. Ooh, so that, that's, a, that's a beautiful thing that God gives us by His grace. Not that we don't think a thing. Not that our flesh don't want it. Yeah, it does, it does, it does, it does. But the underdog, God is doing a good thing. <clears throat> I just want to 
encourage all of us to pray for all the single women. You know, even on this tribe, there have been times that, unbeknownst to you, or maybe some of you know, because you've actually been a tool in ways that God knows your heart, and you knew, you knew, you knew that it was for good. But where families were, you know, where, whether it's to buy clothes or to uh, take them for a little while and, and uh, bless them with, with uh, supplies and so forth, like doing things that, that are needed to help out because finances and, you know, finding a job, especially after COVID, it was hard for people to get back into the routine. Thank God that the economy is starting to get under the boots, right, uh, Lydia? Like, it, it, it's a good time to work, but even our work should be under the lordship of God and never uh, put that work as an idol above God, right? But uh, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself here, but I, I, we, 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 we got to give to the community the way biblical order is. And, and when you do that, when you do that, when you do that, when you pray for the widow, when, when you include the widow in your ministry, when you make it a point to make them a priority because they have an unfortunate situation and God is blessing you, he's bringing an overflow in your situation, the least that we can do is to give out of love to the unfortunate. That's good charity. Even Jesus talks about charity. By the time Jesus started his ministry in his 30s, he, he, he he was once a carpenter, right? But what did he do? He did it full time. You know, foxes have dens, right? You, you know the scripture, right? And the bird has their nesting place. But the man of God doesn't have a resting place for his head. Because at this time, he was anointed and appointed to, to, to be the example that now we follow after. But he made it a very, very important point. To give to the widow. To help the widow. That that should be part of our religion. And if we have any religion, I mean, Ziggy Marley says it best. Love is my religion. That's religion. Not religiosity prideful. Oh, because I do steps one, two, three, and four, and five. It makes me look holy. No, that does not honor God. Like the man who beat his chest. Father, have mercy on me, this wretched old man. Jesus says, that man at the altar walked out justified. The other one didn't. Oh, Lord, thank you that I don't smell like the homeless people. Lord, thank you that I have a huge bank account, a big house. Thank you that I have all these things. You prideful, dirty, wretched, filthy, poor person. monetary goods. The underdog. God is listening to the underdog in his own. Amen. Turn with me to the book of Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 5. First Timothy chapter 5, verses 3 through 16. And the word of the Lord reads, give proper recognition. Now, real quick, real quick. Uh, I started off with a new, uh, with an Old Testament, Old Covenant um, story, right? That speaks of the unfortunate uh, situation Hagar and Ishmael, her son, had to um, endure, right? But now we're going into the new covenant so that we know now, uh, Brother Lydia, so we have no excuse to have the knowledge saturating our spirit, our mind, our soul, so that, so that we can come, Arturo, into compliance, right? We want to make sure that under the new covenant, we are aligned and doing our best to do things God's way. Because when we do our best, and even if we don't, even if we fall short in some places because we're not perfect, but we do our best, God does the rest. rest. That's just how good His grace is, right? 
represent just just how good his grace is. Praise the Lord. Verse, verses 3 through 16. Give proper recognition to those widows who are really in need. But if a widow has children or grandchildren, these should learn first of all to put their religion into practice by caring, not just any old religion, right? But by caring for their own family. And so repaying their parents and grandparents, for this is pleasing to God. The widow who is really in need and left all alone puts her hope in God. Not the next man who looks handsome and I'm going to stop right there. You know what I'm saying. And continue night and day to, to pray and to ask God for, for help. But the widow who lives for pleasure, listen, church, listen, pay attention, keep a watchful eye on. But the widow who lives for pleasure is dead even while she lives. I'm only the messenger, amen, this is God's word. Give the people these instructions so that no one may be open to blame. Anyone who does not provide for their relatives and especially for their own household has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Stop. We just read Hag uh, Hagar. Make no mistake that what she did, she was regarded as worse than an unbeliever. And remember, she didn't break faith once, but she broke it. That was the second time because the first time she broke faith was laughing at God. I'm 80, 90, 100, whatever, how many years she was, but she was very old, right? God ain't going to do this. When, when God says what he's going to do, his word is his bond. Whatever he says he does, it comes to pass. Period. Right? So we see here the similarities that are talking to, to beware of these things. Uh, give the people these instructions so that no one may be open to blame anyone who does not provide for their relatives. Right? Let's go down to nine. No widow may be put on the list of widows unless she is over 60, has been faithful to her husband, and is well known for her good deeds. See, that, see how this is? This is the faithfulness that God speaks of, that, that faith without good deeds is dead, but believing in a thing that has not yet come to pass, but working towards it, this is, that, this is the love and motion religion. We'll continue here. Such as bringing up children, showing hospitality, washing the feet of the Lord's people, helping those in trouble, and developing herself to all kinds of good deeds. Real quick, the washing of the feet was a humble thing. In the Jewish custom, even unto today, even Jesus washed the feet of his disciples. It is the most, it's one of the most humble things that you can do. Get down on your knees to the earth and to wash somebody else's feet that have been dirty by the, the many travels that we've gone through. Hello, somebody, right? We walk and our feet get dirty. But how uh, humble it is for even Jesus Christ, the Son of Man, who our uh, Hopi people say, Masao, he is the beginning and will be the last, the Alpha and the Omega. This man came to earth as dirty as it was, and he not only got baptized by a human being, but he washed the feet of his disciples. A humble thing. So it, when it says this, just know that it was a humble thing to do in custom in those days. Right? Churches do this even as a practice to show their humility as service to the Lord. And Jesus says, I come to serve, not to be served. Ooh, I can stay right there for a long time. 11. As for younger widows, do not put them on such list. For when their sensual desires overcome their dedication to Christ, they want to marry. Thus, they bring judgment on themselves because they have broken their first pledge. Besides, they get into the habit of being, being idle and going from house to house. And not only do they become idlers, but also busybodies who talk nonsense, saying things they ought not to. So I counsel younger widows to marry, to have children, to manage their homes, and to give the enemy no opportunity for slander. Some have, in fact, already turned away to follow Satan. 
Let that sink in. Know the difference. Make no mistake. Make no mistake. I would pass the cycle right now that we had to give over to the devil because God's going to humble him in that situation. However he chooses to do that. But make no mistake. You can know the difference between evil and good and still choose evil. Having felt the touch of God in your life, restore your family even for a temporary purpose, and yet fall back away, go back to your mom, and choose Satan. If any woman who is a believer has widows in her care, she should continue to help them and not let the church be burdened with them. This is a shared responsibility because, hey, we the people are the church. Hello, right? We're attached spiritually to the church. It's a shared responsibility so that the church can help those widows who are really in. See, let this be a calibration for us about the underdog. That as we value mothers, we're going to close out on a native proverb to here today. But it's so fitting, so, so beautiful. Different words, yet in parallel with scripture. And, and, and we got to take, brothers especially, husbands, future husbands in here. We have to honor and reverence and be reminded of their dedication to the family, to the church, because at the end of the day, like Suzette said last week, we're family. We're family, right? So we have an immediate family, but we have the coverage of the church, God's holy bride, Tish, that, that covers us with his grace. We help one another. A need is shown. It's a, it's a, it's a need. Oh, that was the, that's, some of you have helped me a tool, an instrument, right, to, 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 to qualify a need. Sometimes I could, I could be bamboozled, right? I can. Someone could come up to me and lie to me and say, and, and put on waterworks, and, and unless the Spirit of the Lord has me, uh, gives me a word of knowledge, He may want me to experience a, a a, a situation his way because I need to learn something, right? So somebody could come with waterworks and bamboozle me, oh, I need help, and not really need help. Maybe go and buy something they're not supposed to buy and, and use that when they have, you know, children in the house to feed. It happens all the time. But, but, but God has said, use the elders of the church. Some of you are elders, you don't even recognize it, but spiritually you're already there. But, 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 that's another thing, but he said, go to the elders and, 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 and ask. This family came forth. Is it good to do this? I won't even do the service. I don't care how demonic, how infiltrated a home may be. God said, decently and in order. I, I won't even go to a house and pray out a devil or many legions of spirits. I won't even do that. Unless I first go to an elder and say, is it okay? Why? Because I respect the land. I respect the land. Right? But we got to be doing things decently and in order God's way. But I had to do that. Ask the elder, is this a good family? I mean, we're, we're God is about to bless them with, you know, we've tucked away some some ministry funds here and God really wants to pour out. He's ready, he's willing. But I need to know, can I, can I trust that this will go the right way? Yes, but she's a, she's a, a single woman. She's, she's recovering, but, but she's not, she's not uh, using right now. She needs the help. She's a single woman, the dad's dead, what, whatever the scenario is, in prison, in jail, whatever. Just left, whatever. But that's what God, that's what we do as a church. We we utilize the tools, even for our widows, to make sure that we're doing the charity God's way. This is charity, people giving. And last week the fry bread was so good. I almost never can eat a whole food. I can't eat as much as I used to eat. And I love food. 
And I love fried bread. Like last week, I could put as much cheese as I wanted on that thing. That thing. And the, the, the ooey, gooey, chewy, you know, ooey, gooey, chewy uh, fried bread was so good. Oh, man, the beans, the, the lettuce, the tomatoes. But guess what? People labored and contributed to their time to make that and contributed to the church. And, and Apostle Gary Sims, he's walking out with a bag full of fried bread. <laughs> and he was, um, he was loving it. He even had one rolled up in his hand as he was walking out and eating it <laughs> on the way out. That's good, right? But the blessing to see people contribute, even in something that we could take for granted, so simple, but the piecemealing come from here, from there. I got this. Uh, I got a little extra tomato this week. It's about to go bad, so let's use it. And you know what I'm saying? Like, somebody's coordinating that stuff, but that's what we do as a community. We help. We insert ourselves in a problem, especially when it's an invite. We insert ourselves in a problem, and then we help. All right. I've got a proverb that I want to Read to us. Oh, I know, right? Um, hmm. I have it screenshot on my phone. So bear with me. I didn't have time to print it out. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Moms, listen to this. This is this is from a a, a sweet. I love how they say this, right? The reference is. Uh, sweet medicine Cheyenne tribe. This is from a sweet medicine Cheyenne tribe. Listen to these words. Um, all women in the world are like the different colored flowers of one meadow. All are beautiful. As children of the Creator, listen, as children of the Creator, and the Creator is the giver of life and source of all human life. They must all be respected. There is a special magic about women. They are the bringers of life to the people and the teachers of children. Sweet medicine. Right there. Can we give God a great <laughs> Church, no matter what our circumstances look like in the physical, as we see in Hagar's situation, even though Abraham did her wrong, even though uh, Sarah did her wrong, and she sobbed, and that's how broken she was, because she quite literally thought her children or her child was going to die. But God said, no, daughter, I see from heaven, and I'm going I'm to bless him. And I'm going to comfort you. She stopped sobbing, right? But then in orderly, I don't know if you caught this, but in orderly fashion, this dark-skinned, beautiful Egyptian woman who God loved found the son A. A. One. A. White. And it says that he became a great bow and arrow art, uh, archer. Even use one, can you imagine that as a measure? One bow shot. How far is one bow shot, right? It's dependent on the design of the bow, but what a way of measure to get. Did, did you catch that? Just one bow shot away, boom. But no matter what our situation is, our circumstances, how underdog we may think we are, it ain't just for men, right? Like, oh, a boxing match. Hey. Right? It, it, oh. The, the underdog is going up against the, the professional top rank, you know, uh, uh, what's the word, champion, right? But how many times has it actually happened? Ooh, the underdog gets that knockout blow and has the victory. It's not just for men. God showed me in this scripture. Look, the underdogs are women who are single, who are holding it down for their families. God hears from heaven and is blessing. Keep God.
Keep God in the center. Keep creator of the heavens and the earth. Jesus Christ. Keep God at the center. And I share this to, to close up. I try to stay engaged with even what's taking place in the community because I consider this sacred land the hub. And there's other people that are going to be connected to this in their own ministries that God is working with recovery and everything, right? God is bringing this about. This is the love ministerial collaboration for God's honor and glory. But Tanya Lewis, what a beautiful testimony that I read about this woman of God. I don't know if she's the first chairwoman, you know, but like Kamala Harris, you know, she's the first black slash Asian to be vice president. And God is using her. God is using Tom. She had a beautiful family story. Mom, dad, in the picture. Right? You see the blessing of God. And she keeps creator, God Almighty, above everything, every morning, disciplined about praying. Probably even more disciplined than me. <laughs> But how beautiful to hear this testimony, and she's one of your leaders on this land. With God's favor. I don't know, was she there that day when we prayed and we met with council? Was, was she one of the ones in that council office? We got to feel the presence of God fall in that place. Glory knew. Uh, Chairman John, can we pray? Can we have Pastor Kevin pray this soon? I just felt as soon as our sisters spoke those words, glory hit that place. Everybody stood up even faster than me. The chairman. But when you have that kind of reverence for God, God will do great things upon these lands. Because justice, when we do things in order and, and, and not with favoritism, this this woman of God, to hear her testimony on the Flagstaff article that I read this week. How fitting for a Mother's Day, you know, celebration to be reminded of the beautiful testimony that surrounds her character, leaning on elders for wisdom. Where God teaches us that, that, that using the the wisdom of the elders is a, is a proof, it is a good thing to do because it will save you some time. You'll get it right sometimes the first time, not have to do it your way and then uh, fail at it, and try it again your way and fail at it again. When they've gone through it already, they say, step one, step two, shut up now, stop, stop, she's going off, shut up right now. Step three. Oh, wow, the light goes off. Let me try that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Perfect. That's the value. So Tanya leaning on her elders for wisdom to guide her. Lydia, that's why I listen to the elders too for the ministry. I am not above reproach. I am not all that. I don't have all the best ideas. i got to lean on people to guide me. You guys are blessed. Blessed. Amen. Pray for our leaders. Let us all stand up. Let's give God another great hand. Brother Robert, come and pray us out. I don't know why, but God should have been Come on up. Me? Yeah, come on up. Pray. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us all together here on this day. Bless my brother-in-law here and keep him strong in his faith and his ministry so he can continue coming here and blessing everyone and, and just stay who you guys are, true to God and everything like he said. And my blessings are on their way. Amen. 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 Brothers and sisters of God, this is your brother, Pastor Kevin Wildchild, Rob Ferguson. Until next time, God bless you. We love you.